When I went to the Philippines the first time, I was 19 years old. I had a Filipino girlfriend, and we went down there and stayed with her family in a suburb of Manila called Calaocan. And we were in a barangay in Calaocan, and we just lived the barangay life, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. So on this first trip, there was three takeaways that I want to talk about. The first one was that it opened my mind up to what the other half of the world goes through every day. Uh, number two was the family dynamics. And number three was the babes. So let's talk about these three. The first one is very important. It opened up my mind to what is poverty because I came, I, I was born and raised in a city where it, it was pretty well-off city. I mean, there's no problems there in Vancouver, Canada. It's a major city. And when I went to the Philippines, it was the first time I've ever seen street children and, you know, dirty children and families living in a shanty town that next to a railroad track. And it was built by, you know, it was a man-made house built of tin. And I remember it really opened my mind up to the idea that, uh, you know, we, you know, I had never gone without, and I never really realized that none of us have from the West. We, we maybe thought we've gone without, but we really haven't. The Philippines families, as close and loving as they are with each other, they do struggle. They struggle with money. And I had a hard time because I've never struggled with money. My family's never struggled with money. If we needed milk, we went down and, and got milk. You too. I mean, uh, you know, we just don't struggle the same way. That opened up my mind. The street kids. When I was in Jollibee with my girlfriend, there was kids outside. And, uh, you know, they, were just, they just wanted to stare. And I remember I, I got a bunch of them some chicken and rice, and I told them to come in and... The weird thing was they didn't want to go in. It's almost as if they felt like they weren't welcome or they weren't deserving to come in. I don't know what the reason is, but they had a hard time coming in. So, but they did eventually go in and they ate. And so that was good. But the, the, the point is with these street kids is that it could have been us. I mean, it could have been, it could have been me. It could have been you. We can't help where we're born. I mean, very well, we could have been born in these circumstances. And maybe in the next life, we will be. But, you know, there, there's this question, what's the meaning of life? And the answer I like is that the meaning of life is to earn your way into heaven. That's the meaning of life. And when you help these kids, are you really helping them? You're not really helping them, but you just, it's, it's the memory it's the memory. I, you could give 20 pesos to a kid and they could smile and say thank you. And you could, you could have this memory for the next 30 years. And, and that's what really giving is about in the Philippines. It is for me anyhow. And I hope when I tell you this, I hope that you will think about next time a kid needs help in the Philippines. Whenever you give to them, think that this moment in time, you're going to remember for the rest of your life. And uh, let's talk about number two. Number two is the family dynamics. When I was in the Philippines, the whole family was staying there. So it was her, her sister, there was four brothers, and they were all married, and they all had kids. And I, don't, I can't even count how many people were living in this house. I mean, this is not a big house. It's a very old house. It wasn't a tiny house. All the houses were about the same two-story house, but there was about, I don't know, six kids, their families, and the the parents, and, you know, like a family would live basically in a bedroom, and, the you know, they're all just all around the house, and everyone's having fun, and, you know, the people pitch in, you'll have the breadwinners, there was the, some people were OFW, but the kids stayed there, and I remember one brother was in Saudi for his whole life, 20 years. He didn't even watch his kids grow up. The wife was there. Uh, apparently, she was having an affair, but no one ever talked about it. My girlfriend just sort of mentioned it. It's like everyone knows, but no one says anything. But 
what can you do? She was apparently um, sleeping with her boss. And they're raising these two kids, and he didn't even watch them grow up. And then the daughter, you know, she gets pregnant at 19. And, you know, I mean, just it's, you know, <laughs> it's the Philippines, you know, it is what it is. The family dynamics was was really uh, enlightening there because, you know, when I was 18, my mom kicked me out. My parents were already divorced and it was kind of like, I really, I really admired how the family stuck together. I mean, not just kids and the parents, all the brothers, I mean, the, the cousins, I mean, everyone is so important to each other. It's like the family is the top priority. And I admire that because I think that's what a family should be. But I never realized that until I went to the Philippines and saw it firsthand with my own eyes. It was an eye opener. So I just wanted to say that the, the, so the first important takeaway was that it opened my mind to what life is like on the other side of the world because half the world lives in poverty. Number two was the family dynamics. It opened my mind up to what a family really can be and what it should be, in, in my opinion. I really like families. I really like the thought of a family that sticks together for their entire lives. Let's let's go with the reality. I'm a 19 year old boy. Uh, I, w I was interested in the girls. I never got that much attention. Imagine a 19 year old foreign kid there. I got attention from girls. And uh, so let's talk about them. Um, I would go out basically with the brother or my girlfriend, and I tried to go out by myself sometimes. And so when I went out by myself, it would just be around the barangay, up the street. You know, I wouldn't really go anywhere. I might just tell them, you know, I'm going to go down to the 7-Eleven. You know, but the point was not to get a drink or anything. I just wanted to get out by myself because when I got out by myself, it was just cool having this, this attention. Uh, people were staring at me and... I've never experienced that before. It was, this is the third eye opener. It was the attention from the girls who were just all over the place. And, you know, it's imagine you can dream of being Brad Pitt, but, you know, for a few months I was Brad Pitt. And it was kind of like the dream life I've wanted since I was 13 when I started getting interested in girls. But, you know, I've never got attention from girls. God, no, never until I went to the Philippines. So let's talk about some specific things that happened from the Philippines because it was pretty fun. It was pretty cool. When I was in the mall with my girlfriend, I'll be in a store and I'll just be looking at product. But what would happen is the girl wouldn't just take my picture, okay? She would stand next to me. She wouldn't even say anything to me. She would ask her coworker to take a picture of her as she posed next to me as I'm looking at product. I mean, it's totally insane. Now, I don't think that would happen today, but that, that did happen there in the late 90s. Uh, when I was in the Divisoria, if anyone knows what Divisoria is, um, big market there in Manila, uh, I would be walking around and two times someone says to me, white skin or pale skin. And it's like, Jesus, you know, like, what are you trying to insult me or something? I am trying to get a 10. I swear I'm trying to get a 10. <laughs> you know, I didn't know they meant it as a compliment. Now I know. Uh, at the time, I'd never thought of this. I, uh, when they said that, I asked my girlfriend, what does she mean? Pale skin, you know, I was, it was not, uh, I was not happy to hear that. But turns out I learned later on, it is a compliment. They, they love pale skin there. Another eye-opener. Okay, this one is a bit of a doozy. I would always go to the horse racing bar with my girlfriend's brother. Bar, and we'd sit down and drink beer and gamble on the horses. Just, you know, 10 pesos here and there. And uh, they had waitresses there. And you're probably thinking, well, the waitresses were coming on to me. No, that's not what I'm going to say. Now, get a load of this, okay? Now, what happened was... I went there the first time, we went there the second time, and these waitresses, they told their, their family members, their friends, their neighbors, there was this foreign guy going to this bar. And so what happened was, I guess they sort of talked and they said, well, next time he's there, call us. And so we went there and these girls started coming in and they'd, they'd just sit down 
at the table next to mine and they would completely ignore me. They wouldn't order anything. And it turns out like the waitress would ask me like, these are my cousins, aren't they beautiful? And I said, oh yeah, they're very beautiful. And they would say to the brother, they'd like, is he available like this? I mean, there's like, there'll be two girls there at a time. It's like, is he available? Well, there's two girls there. So what, for who, you know, is my question. But of course, you know, the brother had to ruin it. You know, he had to ruin all the fun and say, I was taken. So that, it kind of ruined the fun. But uh, that was cool, okay? Again, probably wouldn't happen today at my age and in this uh, era. Uh, other times when the brother, we, you know, the brother would get a, I don't know, he was building something at the home, he needed a screw or something. So we'd walk down to the store and he'd go in, get the screw or whatever he needed and he'd come out and the, he, he would say to me, the girls were asking about you in there again. No big deal. It's, it was just, it was more attention. And it was, this attention was just nonstop. You guys know what All Saints Day is. Another example. We were painting the uh, cemetery area for her family. They had a couple burials there. And this girl would just, because we went there the first day and then the second day. So second day we went there, there's this girl. She's just waiting in there. And she was waiting for me to come. So we're painting and she's just in there and I'm looking at the brother like, do we know her? And he, he's sort of like, yeah, just ignore, just ignore. But so anyway, I, we're painting the, the, the cemetery thing and, you know, we leave later on. And I said, so who is that girl in there? And he says, oh, she was waiting for you. He's like, waiting for me? She didn't say anything. He says, no, she was waiting for you to say something. It's like, waiting for me to say something? So it was just like, um, uh, like, wow, like we, she was there waiting for me. That's why she was staring at me. And so that was another example uh, of the attention I was getting from these girls. And then you get the cute little kids jumping up and down and whether they want money or not, they were cute. And the nephews and nieces, they went to the nearby school and the, they would come home after, after school with their friends, because the friends would just want to stare. I mean, I would just be watching TV. The kids would just stand there watching me while I'm watching TV. I'd sort of look over at them, and uh, eventually the brother would just tell them to go away, and they would all run away. But that was it, a 19-year-old kid getting all sorts of attention. And of course, I was completely corrupted. I went home. And I just missed this attention. I didn't want to be home anymore. And I just wanted to live in the Philippines. But it just wasn't the reality because I wasn't born a wealthy person. So I couldn't just go there and live whenever I wanted. I had to work and have a job and pay rent and stuff like everyone else. So it just turned into one of those fantasy worlds that was always in the back of my mind. I had to work, but I just went to the Philippines as often as I could and that was that. That was my first trip to the Philippines. So I'm um, going to come at you with another vid. I hope you like this vid. Talk to you soon.